one. Welcome to the first finance committee meeting of the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority um, on October 20th today at two o'clock. Um, and if you are joining us by phone, please use star nine to raise your hand and star six to mute or unmute. That's a toggle. Um, do you want Jean to read the other part or shall I do that? I'll take care of it. Okay. And actually, um, Allison, our um, person that is actually the right person to facilitate it, I just promoted her to um, panelists. So, um, Allison, once you feel like you got your feet underneath you, if you want to um, read these um, COVID attention and then um, allow um, Director Hilliard to uh, call the meeting to order. Thank you so much. I apologize for joining oh. the wrong meeting link first. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'll read attention. This will be a virtual meeting of the Finance Committee of the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. Pursuant to Executive Order N2920 issued by the Governor of the State of California, there will not be a public location for participating in this meeting, but any interested member of the public can participate telephonically by utilizing the dial-in information printed at the top of the agenda. If any member of the public has a request for reasonable modification or accommodation for accessing the meeting due to disability, she, he, they should contact Mark Brown at mbrown at marinwildlife.org. I'm sorry, marinwildfire.org. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, I'm now item one, call the meeting to order. And item two is roll call. Thank you, Nevada Fire District. Here. Bolinas Fire District. Here. Southern Marin Fire District. Here. Sleepy Hollow Fire District. I see a, I see a here. Here. Uh, City of San Rafael. Uh, here. County of Marin. City of Larkspur. With four members present, uh, you have a quorum for the meeting. And, and Director Hilliard, I have heard from both um, Jason Weber and Dan Schwartz. Uh, Jason will be closing out a previous meeting and getting on board when he can. And Dan Schwartz is dealing with some internet challenges in his office. And as soon as he can, uh, can get on, he will get on. Excellent. Great. Um, do we know about a representative from the county? That was Jason. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Um, are there any agenda adjustments? Me? Okay. Did, did I hear? Um, did I hear you ask for David Kimball's attendance? I, I'm not sure I did. Uh, Gene, yes, they. I'm, I'm okay. recorded as here. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Okay. Um, this is now open time for public expression. The public is welcome to address the finance committee at this time on matters that are not on the agenda, that are within the jurisdiction of the committee. Please be advised that pursuant to Government Code Section. 54954.2, the committee is not permitted to discuss or take action on any matter not on the agenda. Comments may be no longer than three minutes and should be respectful to the community. Please silence your cell phones during the meeting. Mute your microphone when not reporting out. I want to add that if you want to speak to an item that is on the agenda, you'll have that opportunity. Are there any public comments or public expression? Our first public comment will be from Stephen Heath. Um, and actually, if Mark Brown, would you promote me to a co-host of the meeting? And that will allow me to... Thank you. Stephen Keith, uh, you may unmute yourself and provide public comment to the committee. Uh, hello, folks. I just wanted to thank you all for being on the Finance Committee and the Board of Directors of the MWPA. It's a very important organization for the county, and your involvement uh, and your skills and attention are very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Keith. Um, are there any other public comments? 
Looking for any further raised hands. And at this time, there's no further public comment. Thank you so much. Then we'll move on to item five, finance committee duties and responsibilities, initial course of action. Recommendation that the committee review MWPA finance committee duties and responsibilities as suggested in the attached staff report, summarized from 8C draft executive finance committee duties and responsibilities from September 17th, 2020 board meeting and consider setting priorities. So if you have, have you all um, had a chance? I mean, maybe I should ask, Mark, can you highlight that, um, your memo? Absolutely, and, um, and I'll, I'll do my best to stay at the highlight level, but then fill in some of the gaps I think that might be needed to be, uh, be filled in based on some of the questions I received from board members uh, prior to today's meeting. And um, I'll be looking to uh, Dan at some point to probably field some of the questions from board members to help with the, the architecture of the MWPA and what was the vision of um, that structure. And when Jason Weber gets on board with his, um, after he finishes his meeting, he's gonna be an important resource as well. Um, but in summary, as you know, the finance committee uh, was uh, created due to Article 5, Section 6 of the MWPA's uh, bylaws. And uh, thank you to Jean for looking into um, the roles and responsibilities of other um, finance committees. And um, what you'll see for under the common responsibilities is that much of the data that we were able to get from other organizations that have a finance committee, that committee has a little bit of a broader, or some of them, have a little bit of a broader responsibility than just the finance aspects. It has a little bit of the administration and personnel aspect that was included. And we'll leave, um, it was included in the list of roles and responsibilities uh, just so that we didn't um, make decisions uh, without direction from the finance committee and the board and leave it to your direction if you want to have this committee focus purely on finance or also have some of the administrative roles. Um, but the bullet points on page two, where it says proposed initial range of duties and responsibilities and setting of priorities. Um, the highlights that I see is that first bullet point of develop a draft and annual operating budget with staff and operations committee. Um, approve the budget at the finance committee, then recommend adoption to the full board. Monitor the progress of the budget throughout the fiscal year. And then one of the ones I think that um, I'm gonna fill in some gaps um, is this bullet point of determine short, medium and long-term fiscal goals and match those goals in the funding parameters defined by measure C and a JPA. And um, many of you have, I'm sure have heard people say 60, 20, 20 or 60%, 20%, 20%. And that's the, the, the framework of our budget. 60% goes towards our core projects. 20% goes towards DSpace evaluations. And there's two routes that we can go with the DSpace evaluations. Uh, organizations can choose to have MWPA perform the DSpace evaluations for them, or they could choose to do the, the DSpace evaluations themselves and then receive their portion of that 20%. And then the final 20% is funding for local projects for each of the member agencies. So some of the budget direction that we will need from this group um, as we develop our policies primarily resides in that 20% for the DSpace evaluations and 20% for um, the local projects and how we reimburse or pay or funnel those monies to the member agencies. Uh, you know, as you know, we have not received any of the tax proceeds from the property taxes and we get 55% of, correct me if I'm wrong, Elisa, 55% uh, in December. And then we get 40% in April, 5% in June. Thank you. And the intent was to uh, pass that 55% to of the um, monies allocated in each of those 20% buckets of DSpace and local projects to the member agencies so they can get started on their work. And then when we receive the rest of the tax um, proceeds from the county through the property tax, that we would finish up funding them. One of the things I think we need to explore is the accountability piece. One of the important aspects of Measure C was that 
Measure C funds could not supplant um, projects and work that was already being done at the local agency level. So I feel that there needs to be some type of accountability. I see Jason joining, so we um, welcome Jason. Thank you. Um, we need to, I feel that the MWPA needs to have some form of accountability for the monies for the agencies that are doing the DSPACE evaluations themselves, and then also local projects. And so um, we need to decide if our policy is going to be that it'll be an immediate pass through of their 20% share for the DSPACE and the local projects, or do we have the agency, we, we upfront them 55% so they can get started and they don't have a lot of upfront costs. And then we true up at the end of the year and um, fund the remaining 45%. Um, Alyssa, did you wanna add anything to that? Just that I'm still thinking it through both as the treasurer of the JPA and as a member of Southern Run Fire and thinking about what would work best. And I don't quite have an answer yet, except that I think it would make more sense to not do the trickle in, not do them as they come in, but um, do it more as a, a, a true up and then a final true up in July or so. Okay, and then um, I'll work through the rest of this uh, um, staff Mark. report at a high level and then invite Jason and Dan to help share some of the architecture behind it since they were uh, so important in developing this uh, to help give us some framework as we work together to build these uh, policies. Um, Before you jump off that, and I apologize, I was late. Um, when we were negotiating the JPA um, with the member agencies, it was pretty clear that the requirement was going to be, and I think you'll see some pushback from member agencies potentially, um, if anything more than an affidavit's required, uh, if it's consistent with the voter initiative, um, to the extent of some people saying, look, that, it, that as the voter initiative is written, it's a pass through. And yes, there has to be acknowledgement of use of the funds as demonstrated, but not an arduous recording process. And I think that the COC is also going to probably weigh in on this subject, I suspect. Um, but just as, as the group moves forward, you know, consider that as the member agency discussions, that was a lot of it was from the city managers. Um, and just put that in the back of your head as a, as a tickler. Yeah, and one option that Lisa and I had talked about was just a high level invoice from the agencies so that we have an accountability and accounting at the MWPA side of what the actual work was done. And so we, if we are audited as MWPA, we can easily go to our records and say X amount of dollars for the Southern Rim Fire Protection District was spent on these local projects. And then we can show that level of transparency to our taxpayers. So it, like Jason said, just these are, we're planting seeds uh, to make sure that we both ensure the accountability aspect, but also meet the parameters of the JPA and as it's written. Question. Um, continuing down. Go ahead, David. Yes, David. Uh, you go, Bruce, and then I, I have a thought too. Quick, quick, quick question, clarification uh, for Jason. Um, so Mark Brown enumerated the 60, uh, 2020, um, what what of those buckets, Jason, are you uh, characterizing as as, uh, as pass-through? Which of those three buckets? So the 20% local, and then yep. for agencies that opt out of defensible space, um, then that would also be a pass-through uh, in, its, in its entirety. Um, so just those two with the caveat on the D space as those that are opting out. Okay, th thanks for the clarification. I just, I get confused easily. So thank you. David. Yes, the thought I was going to share is um, when this first came up, we just, re we use a book, uh, an, a CPA quarterly to review our bookkeepers transactions and, um, and try to get that, keep those straight so that we're not playing catch up at audit time once a year. We did review with our new CPA that this was coming uh, up and have him think about how we might um, uh, record our transactions so they're in compliance with Measure C. And there was two reasons for that. One is we wanted to be compliant and, and be able to show accountability to the community and the county at large. 
And then also uh, to the degree that um, it, it, it would impact us in the future if these funds go away, we would be able to tease out quickly how much we had grown to be dependent on Measure C funds versus other funds. And, and we run on such a lean budget, it really behooves us to know where the money, the money that's coming in, where it's going. So um, we won't do much, we won't do much work on that until we have advice from this committee and, and the board. Um, but I just wanted to share with you, it didn't seem to us unreasonable to have our CPA uh, look at this and, and see if there's a way that we could, without burdening ourselves with a lot of work, uh, keep track of things so that we could meet those two outcomes I just described for whatever that's worth. Thank, Thank you. you. We're interested in hearing other comments from our, our uh, finance committee members on any of the bullet points or any of the things that we've brought up so far. Elisa. Um, it is jogging my memory now that when we had some initial discussions, I believe with one of our prospective auditors about this, the agreement was that the member agencies would be the ones accountable in terms of keeping the records. And it is a no brainer as Southern Fire, we would no doubt we would be coding everything to MWPA. So it's the click of a button, we, would, we could have a report of what we've spent so far. So that's not putting undue burden on them. It's just a matter of what we want um, us to be doing. Do we want that invoice from them? Thanks. Other ideas, any of these bullet points that people would like to point out um, that you either feel should stay in or be removed? Because in, in the bullet points, there are you know administrative things that, as well as uh, oversight. I'm sorry, I couldn't see who was talking. Director Finn has his hand up. Oh, and Director Finn, Phillips. please. Thanks, Catherine. Um, on, uh, on the bullet point that concerns uh, let me back up. I'm monitoring the budget for the current year. Um, could we request, or would it be wise to even introduce this idea of, uh, of implementing the use of some project management software with the local agencies so that we have uh, a window into how things are progressing on their projects for which receiving funding from us, but are being carried out, carried out by them. That might also make um, our budget monitoring process and our expense tracking process go a little bit smoother. I can, I can address that. Um, I've already had um, a, a productive meeting with Chief Tyler at Novato Fire, and he showed uh, the city of Novato's project management website that they have that's a completely open and public site. And um, it's a great platform for us to model. And I anticipate the operations committee to, to make that one of their uh, 21, 22 projects is the formation and creation of that project management website. And then, then from that point forward, all of our projects will be represented on that site. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. There was someone else who wanted to speak. I didn't see. I, I think I have my hand up. Oh, okay. All right, Mayor, thanks. Mayor, um, Phil, Mayor Phillips had his hand up. Mayor Phillips. Yes, I think I have it up here and I think on the screen. Um, I, I certainly agree with uh, Tom's uh, Tom's thoughts. Uh, the others, but Tom more more recently, the one the one thing I would suggest that we do is to uh, provide some uniformity for reporting from the seventeen agencies. Otherwise, we're going to get a helter skelter hodgepodge of expenditures, uh, groupings, et cetera, et cetera. So we have some consistent reporting uh, throughout uh, the organization. Uh, it'll just simplify matters. And if you do it up front, it's pretty easy. Otherwise, it's a nightmare trying to go back and sort out what was what. So that would be my my uh, my suggestion at this point. Excellent. This is David. I think that's a great idea. And it's a, it's a good reason why we'll just step back a bit and wait until we have more advice from, from this committee before we do anything more permanent in, in our own district. Thank you. So I'm going to make a comment here. I actually looked at this and I think that um, ensure that policies and procedures for financial transactions are documented and all. I think one of our primary duties as the finance committee is to create uh, draft policies that can be approved by the board on how we handle all of this. And, um, and that will 
easily more easily define the roles. Um, so um, I guess using examples from all of our member agencies, you probably do have financial policies on you know each of you. And so Elisa, um, oh, let me just ask Mark, what, do, what are we doing about that? And, and Elisa was a good place for you to go as well. Elisa's already been starting to gather um, like agency policies. Um, we, continue, we will um, also expand that search. And I was going to, I haven't had a chance to invite Elisa to this meeting, but um, I've reached out to SMART um, as a large JPA that was built from the ground up recently. And um, General Manager Mansurian has invited me to go uh, meet with um, his finance and administration folks who built those policies from the ground up. And I think that would be an excellent opportunity for Elisa and I to go meet with folks who've done it with a similar agency in a similar time frame. So, uh, but we'll continue to gather more of that information. And then perhaps I can recommend a, um, uh, a few key members from this committee to work with Elisa and I to uh, formulate those draft policies. Thank you so much. Lisa, did you have anything to add? No, that's good. If I could Here's just, uh, yes. uh, I, I sit on uh, the smart board and I've, uh, I've uh, witnessed it, let's say, uh, the reporting, which is really quite good. Having said that, um, many of the other cities, I'm sure, but <laughs> certainly to include San Rafael, we have an excellent plans uh, department and director. And uh, <clears throat> I, I frankly wouldn't rely solely on, on SMART, but uh, might take in consideration, <clears throat> certainly we can make available to you uh, what the city of San Rafael is doing by way of reporting. I can, probably shouldn't say this, but I think in some ways it's, 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 uh, it's better. Good, you can say that. I, You're the mayor. Well, without <laughs> going a lot of detail. But yeah. That's a good um, I'm going down to bullet point number nine, um, where it's, where there are all these little circles. Um, one of the things, I, the first circle says personnel policies. Do, that, would this committee like to take on that role as well? As um, you know, um, I'm not quite sure what personnel, but we're, when we're talking about policies for fiduciary policy, finance policies, would you also like to review um, personnel changes or what role would you like to see us play there? Mark? <laughs> I, like I said, we were giving you the, the similar examples and looking for your, your uh, committee's um, direction on where creating those parameters or what your area of responsibility is. We were giving you options so that you can make those decisions. If so I could that, ask. Yes, please. Yeah. I, 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 does my hand up work or? I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I don't want to interrupt you. I but. can't see everybody on the, you know, I oh, just I, limited. So please yeah, go sorry ahead. About that. Um, I guess I was, I was going to suggest that we have a limited personnel. Right now, Mark is the only person. Uh, it, it strikes me that perhaps the executive committee would be the place to handle personnel matters since we're just dealing with one, one person. I'm in agreement. Two. Good. David as well. Great. Okay, and one other one, and that was bullet point number three, the question of who should be the one to assure the bank account signatories are current. My feeling is Elisa as the treasurer, as opposed to the committee. This seems to be a more of an administrative job. What do you yeah. all think about that? Um, because I don't know how the committee would actually find out who is current and who isn't. You actually have the banking, you know, the signature cards and all. So could we agree that that might be a job for you, Elisa? Okay. Any objections? Uh, I, I hate to add, um, I don't want to hug the show. Um, Elisa is, is part of uh, the staff, I think. I, mean, I haven't had a chance to, to meet, but I think it's part of the staff. And as part of financial controls, uh, you want the board, or in this case, maybe the, you know, the committee under the board, to be approving any changes in, in uh, uh, check signers. So Lisa could be responsible for uh, adding and subtracting as we go along, but they would have to be reported to the board for approval. 
it's an internal control check. That sounds good. No offense, uh, Lisa. I just the way it sort of works. No, I agree. That's good. I agree. Anybody else have something? I think that is a good point. Thank you so much. Best practice. Yep. Yes. Okay. So, good. All right. So then, um, are there any other comments on? I'm not quite sure, Mark, how you want us to set priorities here. Um, this is kind of a first shot at it. So, um, yeah, if you um, go to that next page and you see the staff suggestions for priorities, and um, again, this is where I suggest that we, um, if a few members of this finance committee would be interested in working with Elisa and I it, um, in developing um, the policies and then um, following these priorities. So the first priority is working with staff um, to set the MWPA and APA financial calendar, uh, monthly, quarterly, and mid-year tasks uh, to properly monitor and develop the budget and, uh, um, and audit for the remainder of the year. Uh, review the existing monthly budget and financial reports and provide comments, suggestions, and directions to staff about preferred format and content. And both of those two items um, we'll be able to explore a little bit more later in this meeting. Um, and then number three is uh, direct staff to begin identifying other organizations existing policies for the use of the NWPA. We, we talked about that a little bit. And then this is where I think I need to tap in into Jason and Dan a little bit. Um, yes, I'm the only employee at this time, but at, uh, in the future, I am not gonna be the only employee. And we need to have a little bit of a window of um, the architecture of the 60, 20, 20, and more specific, the 10% of the 60 that's allowable for uh, for the administration of the NWPA? And are there, um, Jason and, and Dan in the architecture and how it was developed, an idea that there would be some employees that work for the NWPA that would not be part of that 10% because they are actually the workforce for that 60% or um, specifically also the 20% for the defensible space evaluations. Excellent. Comments. Are Any you, other comments? Yeah, go ahead. Please. I was just going to ask Mark if he was asking for my comments now or offline to meet. Now, up. please, Jason. Okay. I think he asked for it now. Oh, did he? Okay. Oh, I'll give you, and, and Dan and I, I don't know, the Zoom thing, I've got my screen. I need to make sure I can see Dan's facial expression when I'm talking. <laughs> You know, I think that the administrative costs were, in, at least in the architecture of this, were true administrative costs. But if, if somebody was tied to a program of work, um, because we left this open to take the most, you know, the best approach ultimately with a board in place uh, related to the operations. So maybe the use of contractors, it may be the use of a contractor, it may be the use of a seasonal employee, um, and it may be uh, necessary in some cases to have a full-time employee, um, but if, if their role isn't administrative in nature, then it would be tied to the program costs of the operation um, because it's not feasible to, to, to run the program of operation underneath that umbrella from a financial perspective it would just be impossible. Good. Dan, do you have... I didn't see your eyeballs pop out of your head when I said that, so. <laughs> no, I agree. I, I think it was the assumption that there would be one or two or three admin positions, depending on the nature of the agency. There might be consultants, there'll be auditors, and all that was supposed to come out of the admin portion of the 60%, but not any personnel you hire for fuel reduction or any other type of activity we may do. Thank you. Any other comments? Are there any public comments? Uh, Director Kimball and yeah, um, yeah. Phillips at their hands. Yeah, Sorry. And, and maybe I'm moving a little bit out of the, the, uh, the priorities, maybe not. And it's not something for today, but I'm, I'm thinking about all of the buckets, the 60% the and the two 20%, but mostly the 60 in, in the, the local. Um, how we as a finance committee maybe influence, um, the, I, I, I'll use the word rigor that we ask um, of our projects in terms of defining 
We can't calculate from a purely financial point of view a return on investment, but we can be thinking in those directions in terms of to the degree feasible and not burdensome, uh, documenting or projecting what we think benefits are, be they tangible or qualitative, um, and, and mar marry that up with the expenditures, be they operating or capital. I imagine most, and Dan could probably coach us on this, they're mostly gonna be operational expenses if there will be any capital expenditures at all. But, but thinking ahead, how do we put all of ourselves under um, some amount of discipline to really try to come to terms with what, what the benefits and outcomes are of initiatives and, and marry that up with the costs. And of course that then would be able to be uh, dovetailed into a plan, a strategic uh, and or a tactical plan. And maybe I'm not being clear, but those are kind of fuzzy thoughts. We don't have to do it today, but it may be something the finance committee decides to, that we wanna burden ourselves with. Thank you. May I make a comment, please? Bruce, Bruce please. Yeah, uh, Director Kimball, that's ec excellent um, uh, item for us to contemplate, not just the Finance Committee, but I do believe that um, it's, it's going to be incumbent upon um, the board in the strategic planning session to begin to articulate um, what it is that we envision in 10 years or 20 years out, hopefully in 20 years out, and it, it, there, there's a vision associated with, and, and there are going to be some metrics associated with this. There's gonna be changes in, in hazard ratings of parcels. There can be changes in acres of extreme or high or moderate. Uh, there, there's gonna be um, uh, metrics associated with fire lines. There's gonna be metrics associated with hardened homes and those with defensible space. So I, I, I think that it's, it, it's incumbent upon the board to, to talk this through initially and then it, it's my vision then that we would commission uh, the, the operations uh, a team uh, and the technical team to ponder this and to build out a program of, of, of you know, metrics and monitoring. And then we, we can tie the financials to it through our project management software. And sh we should be able to get real time uh, data associated with, with, re with returns in the in in the in the form of a me metrics, and these these are not these are not uh, these are not outputs. These are outcomes that we can measure. So thank you so much. I, I, I think it's incumbent upon again the board and and ops. And I know that uh, I know that we're going to get this done. But I think it's critical that we knock this thing out early and we build it out right, so that we know that what we're investing in, why, and what we're expecting to return. So thanks for bringing that up. It, may I just, Catherine, add another sure. thought? Yeah. Just uh, for Dan and Jason, all of you don't know me. I, I certainly want to make sure my comments are taken in the context. I don't want planning to uh, take a front a burner <laughs> over action. So just so you know, I, I'm not thinking that this is an academic study. This is, let's be some amount of discipline and give some uh, clear uh, direction for the operations committee. But I certainly would not want to be in a position where the finance committee uh, puts planning ahead of let's get this thing done. So just so you know that that's always a bias of mine, that action's more important than planning, but we better do it within some thoughtful parameters. Thank you. And Chair, I'll, I'll, I can answer that, but I, Mayor Phillips has had his hand up, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, just a couple of things. You asked for volunteers for the next uh, phase. and. You know, my, my term's about up, I think, as many of you know, if not everybody, so I'm not going to volunteer just for, for that reason alone. Um, but this is an important function, and I agree with uh, David that it's important for the community, <clears throat> not for us to have 400 meetings, but rather, you know, get on with it, so to speak, not haphazardly, but in an orderly fashion, but without without delay. So I, I think, David, I think you're, I think you're right on. Um, I was going to suggest and, and I, Bruce is going to address this, and this may not be the, the format, but I, one thing that has always concerned me a little bit, so I'll lay it out there now, because it relates somewhat to finance, and that is, how does this, uh, how does this group, either the finance committee or more appropriately the board, address um, allocation of funds for uh, fire protection? I mean, I, my two extremes are Mill Valley, uh, very susceptible uh, to summarize, San Rafael, the biggest uh, biggest city, and you know, I'm somewhat involved with San Rafael. Uh, so, how do we how do we divide our attention? Uh, do we devote most of our attention to, let's say, Mill Valley as the example, as I cited, 
uh, because of its susceptibility or San Rafael because it's the largest population center. Now that's going to be an interesting charge. And I don't have an answer. I'm just bringing it up because I know it's going to be critical and it's going to be important from a financial uh, committee standpoint because you have to keep track of how those funds are in fact allocated and what's done with them. So that's going to be Bruce and, and certainly the others. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be a challenge. But I like your poor thinking and you know, 10 years, et cetera, et cetera. So good luck with that. But anyway, I just wanted to say I'm, I'm not going to volunteer because of my short term uh, duration, but, but thank you. Thank you. Director Finn has his hands up. Director Finn. Thank you. Uh, and I'd like to associate myself with both David and Mayor Phillips's comments. I, I think they're spot on. Um, I will volunteer <laughs> uh, if necessary, uh, but I'm not a financial professional. Um, and in that spirit, I'd like to just mention a couple of things that are um, implied in the list of priorities. Uh, Bruce was talking about uh, building this out, and that's going to take some time and policies and procedures. But, the one, but there are some near-term things that we need to make sure we do or avoid while we're building this out. And uh, at the top of the list, of course, is building our credibility as a committee so that we enjoy the confidence of our fellow directors on the board generally, and then they in turn enjoy the confidence of the voters. Uh, we, we don't want to lose sight of that because we are under some scrutiny here to get things rolling fast. Um, at the same time, we want to create confidence among the variety of uh, uh, constituents that we have. That would include people like our employees or staff, our creditors, our suppliers, our contractors, um, you know, all those people need to know that we know what we're doing or we're in the process of uh, figuring out what we're doing. And then finally, uh, in terms of avoiding uh, mistakes here early on while we build out, the, I, I think the things that come to my mind are things like missing a forecast uh, by a large margin or some unexpected cost overrun or an unbudgeted expense or other similar surprises that could happen to us early and knock us off the track. Um, so we, we just have to guard against that while we go through the process of creating our policies and best practices. Thank you. Excellent points. Great. Thank you, Director Finn. Um, okay, are there any other, I mean, these are all excellent points. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes. Okay. I would just say, I'll answer really quickly, Kimball, as we build the 2021 work plan process for next fiscal year, we will include a metrics section. Um, you know, my goal is that the COC will be able to open this, look at it, understand where every dollar went attached to a project um, when we talk about those core funds um, and, and essentially have just a very transparent process. It's also an opportunity for us to learn from that process so we can make adjustments to, to whether you know, a contractor uh, or someone else is a, is, a, is a better tool to get the work done and learn from each other. So uh, to answer those questions, that's our intention in building the work plan and it's to ultimately have the projects move forward, but uh, have, that, have those metrics that at the end of the day, we can, we can show our success. Excellent. So you, what you wanted us to do was to consider this. Do you want, is there any action or outcome or do we go to the next round with the next meeting on um, that? You've given the recommendations to um, myself and staff, Elisa, um, where we want to go with the um, roles and responsibilities. And I don't know if this is a voting item, but we've already have uh, Director Finn uh, volunteering to help with um, with that uh, development. And I think maybe one or two other members that would be willing to work with Lisa and I would be beneficial. I would be willing to volunteer. And I, I definitely would not want to go over three. I, and I would be willing to unvolunteer if you get three. <laughs> um, I think between Lisa and I and the two directors that have volunteered, I think we can get a lot accomplished. <laughs> Can I just make one more thought, uh, Catherine? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that really strikes me too is I, I would hope that we as a finance committee would be uh, open and looking for guidance also from the operations committee. That it, that it isn't strictly a top-down process. That this is really, we're learning from each other and that we're 
um, you know, because the operations committee is closer to the ground and they're going to know what works better and what doesn't work better than than maybe we will. So I would hope that as a kind of a, 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 a cultural thing that we keep ourselves open to um, their guidance as well. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you. Yes. I agree and I also appreciate President Goyne's comments and I also um, realize that um, this is, we, we do have a responsibility because we are, just as um, Chief Weber said, we're, what, if we do this right, it should be easy for the, any oversight and for the public to see this in a very transparent way. So, yeah. Are there any other comments? Um, Mark, what should I do next? <laughs> public comment, okay, thank you. Okay, having heard all of the board of uh, the committee members discussion, um, are there any public comments? Our first public comment will come from Lucy Dilworth. Lucy, you may unmute yourself and speak with the committee. Um, thank you. Ha hello, everybody. My question might be more of an operations uh, committee question, but I think it does apply to the finance committee too. Um, when, when you're looking at the architecture of funding local projects um, and you, can the committee consider a process that goes beyond an affidavit to get a project approved? But can it consider what happens if the project doesn't meet the standards for funding? Um, and so what I thought what this would lead to would be a mechanism. If the project proposal doesn't meet the rules for funding, the local jurisdiction could keep the entitlement to the money but for a different future project, and it doesn't receive the money for the non-qualifying pro project up front. Does that make sense? Um, want me to, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jace. So I, I think, Lucy, to your point, if you look at the, uh, the program of work for this year, uh, we have every intention of being as transparent in future years with the local projects as much for tracking as anything else. Um, so uh, if there's something that, that you, know, you or others feel could be improved in that process, uh, you're certainly welcome to email Dan and I. And as we look at the, the 2021 work plan, um, you know, I think that the JPA states they, they must, it must align with the voter initiative. Um, but I think we went well beyond that this year in just creating a transparent process for local projects. Uh, so they're easily trackable. Um, and, and again, we can then pull all this data together to demonstrate that these funds are being used uh, appropriately in alignment with the voter initiative and making a difference. Do you have um, any further comments, Ms. Dilworth? No, thank you. Director, thank you, Director Finn has his hand up, Catherine. Oh, thank you, Director Finn. Can I ask a question about Ms. Dilworth's comment? Uh, and my question is that the description that she gave sounds vaguely similar to a block grant where uh, the entity receives the funds and has discretion as to how to apply it. And that wasn't my understanding of Measure C is that somehow the funding that we provide to the local entities has to be consistent with the priorities that are established on a macro level. Um, Bruce, I see you shaking your head. Could you take it from there? No, I, I, I would agree. Uh, and and uh, Lucy, I, I, I appreciate the question. Uh, I think the initiative is, is crafted in a way to, to, that we are, we, are, we are responsible for making sure that, that funds go to uh, what the initiative is intended to accomplish. And specifically, every project is vetted. If it's appropriate, the funds go there. If it's not, they don't. Um, in regards to... Um, uh, there's also a provision for the for the five year leveling where it, it, at a five year term, um, you know, eighty percent of the funds, if I if I understand this correctly, have to go, uh, to, you know, in in apportionment uh, to the entity in, in in proportion to what they paid in, and if it if that's not true, then it gets corrected in the next five year period. So I think there are provisions for making sure that money is is, is uh, first of all, it has to go to what it's, what it's intended for. And secondly, there's a leveling. So I, I think it would be difficult for us to hold funds for another future project uh, when other entities might, you know, 
have eligible projects. I, I think we'd want to be biased towards investing in, in, in current active projects that qualify, uh, a bias for, for action, as, as David and Gary both said, uh, and then and do the five-year level up. That, that's, that's my take on it, but a great, it's a great question. Thank you, President Goins. Any other comments? Okay. I'm looking, oh, there's um, one more public comment from Stephen Keith. Stephen, uh, you may unmute yourself. Good, thank you. Um, um, you all have brought up all, almost all of the issues I would have, which is thinking about uh, 10 years from now when we have to go back to the voters and making sure that uh, there's nothing that we've done which leaves the uh, leaves us open to some complaint. Uh, so I think that the, what you all have discussed so far is so, so squeaky clean, which I hope and we'll, the COC I'm sure will be watching as, as well as you folks um, to make sure that, that we're, when we go back to the voters, uh, they're pleased with us and the way we operate. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, Mark, do you feel that you have the comments and direction of both the members of the committee and the public and can work with that? I do. Okay. Then if no one has any more comments, we'll go to item six, review of monthly budget reporting documents. Recommendation yeah. that the finance committee review the monthly budget reports, provide direction and comments regarding format and content and authorize staff to revise and or use as presented. And then I would refer you to the, um, the review of monthly budget reports. And so Mark, do you want to start this or? Elisa? I'm just basically going to kick it off at um, thank Elisa for all the work that she's been doing and that I've had a couple of conversations with board members um, and I've encouraged them to ask any questions to Elisa. Um, She's the one that's got the, she's the brain power behind it. So I figured we'll have her speak about it rather than me. Okay, Elisa. Yes, well, you have the budget reports and I am open to any feedback about what you might wanna see. Um, I just wanted to comment that I normally don't do a budget by month like I do here. I did it because of director Gerbsman. but I'm not finding that it's, it's very relevant. I, I think the year to date um, is what we most need, but I'm, I'm very happy to keep this if anyone wants it. And I would, I would love any more feedback about anything else you'd like to see. That brings a good point. That is how often do we as a finance committee want to review a budget documents? Um, monthly, quarterly, um, I, I'm thinking quarterly would probably be a, I don't want to say semi-annually because that seems like we're not doing it. But um, President Goins, do you have any ideas about this? Well, I, I'd refer to the to other to committee, to, to David and Gary and uh, Tom, who others have more experience in this. I would be happy with with quarterly, uh, but I, I'd really like to, like to hear other, other opinions in this regard. Yeah, me too. So anybody have an opinion? David has his hands up and Tom Finn after that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm uh, Gary. <laughs> Alicia, Alicia took the words out of my mouth that for me monthly, uh, to me quarterly and starting to look at year to date is where things really start to converge and doing anything more frequently than that I think it's just spinning our wheels um, in terms of using valuable time. So I'm very much in line with what Alicia said. Okay, so in a way we have, so do we have a consensus that these reports would be generated quarterly? And we have Tom Finn and- um, Oh, sorry, please, Director Tom Finn. Finn. Thank you. Um, I, I'd ask Alyssa to uh, tell us what she thinks might be customary in an agency of our size and activity. Uh, although we are unique in many ways, it might be difficult to find a parallel agency, but if uh, quarterly is sufficient, I'm for that. But Having said that, I'm gonna to defer to Director Phillips on these kinds of questions. Uh, well, thank, thank, thanks, Tom, uh, but I, I'll make it simple. Um, I agree with uh, David's uh, observation. Quarterly is adequate. Uh, monthly, I think, is, is uh, not a complete waste of time, but it's, 
it's uh, not nearly as uh, as useful as a, as a quarterly uh, compared to year to date. The exception I would make is that if Lisa sees something out of line with what the expectation, in other words, budget, then that should be brought to the uh, finance committee's attention immediately. Thank you. Okay. And uh, just to add there, um, what I actually meant was um, I was showing, Jason and I had outlined which months each expense would occur. And that's what I'm finding is not very useful. I wasn't exactly referring to the frequency of the report. It was just that we, we just loosely put together, we thought all the fire safe Marin would happen in December and it's happening in a totally different month. And I really don't see the need to track which month we think it's going to happen, but just report what's happened and where we stand in terms of the entire year. Okay. So, Great. Okay. And um, Director Hilliard, I'd suggest that uh, our recommend at this time that if there are any board members that have questions or direction on uh, questions about the budget as presented um, and any recommendations or requests for how it's presented, um, now would be a perfect time. Okay. Um, I, yes. I have just one, one suggestion. I think we probably answered this, but I do think that we need to uh, to line item the admin the admin component of our budget period, uh, both in, in the, the annual budget. Um, I, I don't think we need to account for it necessarily, but I think this needs to be a line item uh, <laughs> for what the administrative costs are gonna be so that the COC and the public can see that we're conforming uh, within the 10% um, limitation. Yeah, I'd like to know more about what you're referring to because I'm not familiar with that piece and I don't see it in the budget, which is probably what you mean. So perhaps uh, uh, Chief Weber uh, could, could, could better articulate what you're asking for. Yeah, and I'll, I'll do it briefly and then we can connect with Mark, Alisa. Yeah. Um, but bottom line is the, the JPA requires, there's a requirement in the JPA that only 10% of the funds uh, be spent on administrative costs. And I think that there may be some some policy items that come back to this group, uh, you know, to to determine which uh, box that fits in, if you will, uh, and then it's just tracking it um, in a manner that that expense is targeted towards the the admin costs. So at the end of the day, nobody has to go search and dig through piles of financial documents to try to determine wh where we hit our ten percent. So it's ten percent of the sixty percent. Uh, there isn't necessarily uh, admin costs associated with uh, the pass through. So with the exception of DSpace that has um, the, the uh, a piece in there for um, compliance, uh, drawing a blank of the name, but we can, we can work offline on it. I, I and Mark, Mark, I'm sure understands it. So. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Any, Any other, other comments? Requests or discussion? Uh, well, I, I would like to just say, even though we're really trying to be conservative, that in my opinion, uh, $15,000 for legal services may be too low. Um, I think that we may need to push that up a bit. Um, so I, I don't know what the other committee, I mean, I don't want to. But I do think that it's a bit low, especially because we're starting up and need a lot of advice on various things to be sure we're in compliance. Um, I wonder how other members of the committee feel. I, I, I would agree, uh, Director Hilliard. Uh, we're, we've already exceeded the fifteen thousand dollars. I think we're at twenty or twenty-two, and we are we are currently real time uh, consulting with uh, the, the the board approved uh, consultation with uh, attorneys regarding. Our, our path forward regarding secret compliance, uh, uh, Gene and Mark are on that. And, our, and as we speak, I believe our, our legal staff is talking to this contract attorney. So uh, we, we have not actually received an estimation of the magnitude in numbers of hours or, or uh, what that contract says, what, what the limit on that contract is. And so I think, you know, it's a challenge. I, I, this should be a challenge for the, uh, uh, Mark, uh, to, to, to help us understand that and to bring that to the executive committee and then to bring it to the board. But uh, yeah, we're underwater already and we're gonna go underwater probably twice as deep as we've already projected, I, th I think. 
So do we, Bank, do you want a, a recommendation? Well, you need to find some, some figures in order to give us a recommendation of how much more we should add to the budget? Yeah, you... uh, I got uh, Director Kimball's raised in the sand. I, think okay. I, I was just, before you answer, Mark, I was just going to say that the way I viewed the, the, the budget that was put in front of us some time ago and the one that's in today's packet is it's a placeholder budget. It, it gets us a starting point, but I, it, it kind of, jump, I'm jumping ahead to a few, an, another agenda item for today, but I think it argues for more frequent upfront finance committees as we, as these realities start to come in in terms of what it's really costing so that, that we can then fine tune this, what I'll call a placeholder budget and not get too stuck right now on, we missed the budget as it's presented right now because we don't have the experience upon which to, to build that yet. So for whatever that's worth, I think we should uh, exercise a little bit of, uh, I'm gonna call, <laughs> say disciplined flexibility. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I will um, create um, a path or an estimated path of what I think our legal expenses will be based on the conversations with our current council and our new council for that's specific to environmental compliance and um, get that information to your board. Thank you so much. And any other uh, comments on the budget report itself, the year to date budget reports? I think Director Kimball hit it right on the head. We just need to see basics and then we can um, refine it as we go. Are there any other comments from the members of the committee? Um, Three, nine, oh, sorry. Just a minor, minor comment that, that, that the, okay. the short term note payable, that there's no, no identification of, of interest associated with that. Um, it, it's, a, it's pennies, I think, but, um, uh, and I don't know how, how that's going to accrue. Um, I think we will be um, signing more, requesting uh, more from the county. I think we have a $4 million authorization, but uh, I, I didn't see the interest there. Just, um, and the, uh, I made a note on this uh, next draw. Oh, um, what, we, have, we have some bills coming in and we have not discussed the next draw on the county loan. Um, when, when do we envision doing that? How much do we need? I, I, I think we, we're going to need to to shine some daylight on that here of, eventually, and this is a this is a commission I think for for uh, uh, for our executive officer to figure that out for us and, and let us know. Yeah, Lisa and I can definitely get together and and, and give that information get that information to you guys. And then one last comment on the on the the landscape or the profile spreadsheet the um, the. Uh, shows uh, our, our, the, there's a line item for startup costs and uh, it's, it's identified as $250,000 in uh, July, August and November. Uh, uh, Chief Weber, uh, you provided us with a breakdown of, of those startup costs, but I think it's important for transparency that we uh, enumerate that in detail. It's a quarter million bucks. Uh, so if just for the record, for transparency, for the COC and for the citizens, uh, if we can, if you can just populate the details of that in a future report, I think that would be uh, valuable to the public. And I don't think Elisa is going to let, let the county be paid without that detail. So it's just, I don't believe Lisa can answer this better than I, but it'll be fully accounted for. Okay. So you can see the details on the prior page. You can see what we've spent. The 171,000, 171,000. And then I think we had talked about putting um, our interim chief officer's salary in there because we still have some funds available in there. Okay, okay I'm referring to line item 6650, uh, quarter million dollars. So, uh, yeah, if you're on the landscape page, go back to the, the page right before that. This expense detail at the bottom. Yeah, and that shows everything that comprise every expense for each category so far, and the startup cost is is at the very bottom, and it, it totals one hundred and seventy one thousand. Oh well, thanks for educating me. <laughs> That's why we're all here. Thank you very much. 
Uh, it's uh, sorry. So my, my apologies to all of you. I don't want to, meet, to no. waste your time. Elisa, I have a request. When you do the landscape version, can you put a title at the top? I know that this is Measure C, FY 2021, 2020 and 2021, but can you make it a standout title on the top? So, Well, actually, what I had requested was to omit that landscape report altogether due to the un relevance of the timing of all the expenses. Yeah. I, I would just like the the main okay. budget and get rid of the landscape altogether. Okay. I mean, how do other members of the committee feel about that? I think we agreed to that, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So now um and I do have a I have to show how dumb I am. But in the very beginning of the report, you use some acronyms that I don't understand. Um, I wondered if you could just tell me what they are. Like, what is a GAAP? That's the generally accepted accounting practices and the GFOA is the Government Finance Officers Association. Thank you so much. Now I know I wrote it down, so I won't ask again. It's All right. Order by the minute, aren't we? <laughs> Boy, I mean, I should know it, but now I know it. All right, so I think having heard from everyone on the committee, are there any um, public comments on this item? Looking for any raised hands in the audience, and it looks as though there is no public comment. Okay, thank you. So moving on to item seven, MWPA financial management schedule, monthly, quarterly, mid-year, annual budget, and independent audit. Recommendation that the Finance Committee review a draft financial schedule for the remainder of FY 2021, 2020, 21, and authorize staff to set the schedule for future planning. So have you all had a chance to take a look at that recommendation? It's, um, it's yeah, there weren't page numbers, but it's page 14 if you're going from front to back. So it's, um, so there are dates actually, recommended planning dates at the bottom. So um, I would welcome any comments on this. Well, I have a question. So if we do um, budget planning and preliminary budget planning, of course, we're gonna do it in, um, according to the Brown Act, but um, at what point do we have an official public hearing as opposed to you know allowing public discussion this is a question for both mark and alisa and jason um i think do we just need to do it once when we do the preliminary or final budget or do we have to do have an actual hearing every time we present budget numbers i'm going to lean on um gene after i make my my, my um understanding of it is that uh, as staff works with um, key members of the finance committee, we could do that without it being a public meeting. And then we would present that budget to the finance committee, then that would be when it's um, subject to the Brown Act, correct, Gene? Yeah, the, uh, the finance committee meetings are Brown Act meetings. So they would be, um, part of the, the public um, process. And the JPA was formed under the auspices of, of county governance structures. And that means that um, in order to adopt a budget, you are required, the full board is required to have two public hearings. And so um, the second to the last page of the staff report um, suggests dates for, um, for the two public hearings that are required. And then in preparing this report, we backtracked um, to give the finance committee time to do some initial um, oversight review of the budget uh, that could come forward. And But it would have to be two public hearings. And the budget has to be adopted by June 1st, um, according to the JPA. So that means your hearings are gonna have to be in April and May. Uh, so that your budget is in place um, on June 1st, which is part of your, your JPA structure. Thank you. And thank you, Jean, very much. And then um, 
as was mentioned, there are several dates already proposed um, based on that marching back from our um, thresholds that we need to meet. Um, the only TBD that was on there is any quarterly budget reviews. And um, I've heard the message of, you know, we want to get work done. Um, we don't want to kill ourselves with meetings, but we also have to make sure we have the transparency and um, we're, we're meeting in, a, in, a, in, a in enough of a regular fashion that we can make decisions. So um, under quarterly budget reviews, we have none at present. And I am open to a recommendation to um, throw some dates at you guys offline, um, start scheduling those if so desired. That sounds good to me. Any other comments about that? Is it David? Hi, David. Uh, yes, um, I just, uh, it's going back to the, I'm jumping back up to the, um, the proposed dates for November 17 and or December 15. And I think that in the interest of uh, standing up the organization, I suggest that we put uh, places in our calendars for each of those November and December dates so that we make ourselves available as a finance committee uh, to both the board, but more importantly, the operations committee and Mark uh, to provide timely feedback and, and um, answer questions that they may have. So I'm willing to make that extra investment early on uh, as one of the members of the finance committee. Thank Great. you. Me too. And um, Director Goins, President Goins, are you also? Thumbs up. Is, is I'm, I, I think it's a really, really wise uh, for, uh, take yeah. on that, David. So thank you. I agree. Yes. Tom Finn has. Um, so up. Director Finn. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, just a question. Uh, if our budget is required to be passed by June 1, but the local agency's budgets are typically not required to be passed until June 30, could we find ourselves in a position where a local agency hasn't budgeted for a project that we are expected to finance before we have that information for purposes of our budget? Or is this just a theoretical problem? Uh, now, I, I, I may be wrong. Aren't local agencies on a June 30 uh, hard date for passing their budgets? I, I can, Dan, go ahead. I think you're about to say the same thing I am. Uh, during the formation of the JPA, the cities and county staff requested this schedule to make sure that the JPA completed its budget process with sufficient time for the cities and the county to incorporate that into their budget process. So it was the preference of the member agencies that this agency finished before those agencies took up their budgets. Great, thank you. Thanks so much. Other comments? Okay. Um, okay, comments from the public. Looking for any raised hands from our audience members, and it looks as though there is no public comment. Okay, thank you so much. So, Mark, do you think you have direction of where I we're going? The direction is to schedule the meetings that are listed on the sheet, including the and or, so that um, we have the option to already have those in our calendar. And in case we don't need the or meeting, we can just cancel it, but it's already there. And then I will recommend some quarterly dates to you guys offline and get those calendar. Perfect. Okay. All right, moving on to item eight, planning for future staffing and employment practices. This is an oral report. And so I'm gonna turn it over to you, Mark. Absolutely. And um, we've already touched on a little bit of it with the discussion of the 60-20-20. Um, which buckets are providing staffing that would go towards uh, the Marine Wildfire Prevention Authority and also uh, the not to exceed 10% of the 60%, um, but also not to view that as, well, we're gonna, that's our goal is to spend the 10% of the 60. Um, we definitely would rather get money focused towards work rather than staffing. Um, right now uh, we, um, need a, a staff to support what we are, have going on. Uh, Elisa and Maria from Southern Marine Fire have been vital um, to get our work done. However, they also have full-time jobs with Southern Marine Fire District. And I view that contract as a stopgap to be able to get us the support that we needed. 
Um, and then we need to start hiring staff to run the program within the MWPA, but in a lean and an efficient manner. Um, Jean and I have been discussing her developing um, job descriptions for three key positions I feel that we need to hire soon. Um, one of them would be on the operations side. It would be someone that is an expert in program management and specifically projects that have um, CEQA implications. While we are gonna have counsel to help guide us through the CEQA process, if we have a, a program manager that is well informed on that, the, and we have a tight package that goes to our firm for environmental compliance, it'll decrease the hours that that firm is having to, to work on that. The second position I'm asking for um, um, Gene to create a, a job description for is um, a finance administration lead. And that person would be the person that really, once we get them on board, would be building the finance admin policies and practices of the organization and, and staffing the rest of that out. And the third position would be um, an analyst level um, finance aid. So that they would be the person that's really digging deep and um, working um, the numbers and the spreadsheets and our project management. Um, then after we get that framework built then and we have our team in place, then we can start exploring the greater organizational structure and work with the finance committee and the overall board um, to um, find out where that threshold is between who we're, what projects we're gonna do with um, contractors and which projects are gonna be done with um, MWPA employees. And um, also the um, defensible space evaluations uh, forecast how many of the agencies will continue to do D-space evaluations on their own compared to how many of the agencies will want the MWPA to do the D-space evaluations. Thank you and so much. I'm open to questions, recommendations, suggestions, what have you. Are there any comments? This sounds good. So hiring a program manager grounded in CEQA, a financial administrator, administration person, and an analyst level financial aid. And then we're going to do D-space evaluations. So that's for now, is that, yeah. And if, if I may just, uh, I, I think at some point, um, at pr probably after the board, uh, the board strategic planning meeting, we have talked about, um, and perhaps this is a contract, contractual position, but uh, having staff, I don't know whether this would be you, Mark, or whether you would need some assistance in tapping into uh, federal and state programs that are complementary to the MWPA, uh, mission goals and objectives. Um, grantsmanship is, a, is an art um, and it, it requires you know, somebody very talented, somebody that can tell, tell a great story, uh, a compelling story. And um, so I think we might wanna at least keep that in the wings for either contract. To, and, and then there's the administration component, which I think would go to finance and accounting, of course, but I do think we should keep at least that, keep that in mind. Uh, uh, position to support seeking uh, complementary funds. Okay, um, Director Phillips. No. Uh, sorry, I, I was just brushing off a fly. If I may address uh, Director Goings' comment about um, grant acquisition, and um, I definitely foresee that being an important um, uh, role or um, mission for the MWPA and it's one of those ones, in my opinion, that um, has that bridges the operations side and the finance administration side, because it's the operations people that have the intimate knowledge of what we need and how to craft that message to get uh, the grant award. And then when we start turning around and having a grant program within the MWPA, I feel that um, it would be on the operations side of the shop that uh, approves or uh, um, denies those grant requests, but then they work hand in hand with the finance side to make sure that the budget limits aren't exceeded and, and the monies are either properly received or expended. So you're, so you're, you're talking about two, two, two sides of the grants. One is seeking funds that come in from federal and state partners. And then also then you're mentioning, I didn't even think about this, but it's true. The administration of the programs that we set for 
low income seniors, we're going to have grants for home hardening, we're going to have grants for defensible space. And, and there is a, a whole internal, you know, uh, management structure, of, you know, accounting, whatever project management and accounting. So thanks for adding that to it, Mark. Um, they're, they're both complementary. And if I, I, I did omit one thing about in my oral report, and that is, um, we're talking about hiring three employees um, if I get board permission to create those positions. However, um, we don't even have hiring practices established for the NWPA. So that's one of the things that you guys can look forward to um, in, at our November board meeting is an agenda item so that we can bring on a human resources uh, firm to help us create our um, HR practices that include hiring practices. Excellent. Great. Okay. And you said, Gene, that it is going to do some of the uh, job descriptions? Uh, exactly. In Great. fact, I are going to meet Thursday morning. Wonderful. Okay. All right. If that concludes uh, item eight, then um, are there any public comments on item eight, which is planning? Looking for any raised hands, and there is no public comment. Okay, hearing none, moving on to item nine, information items. Um, do, Mark, do you have any information items or anyone else have the information item? Is, there's no information under information items. Okay, all right, that makes it really easy. We're unanimous. <laughs> Okay, so now moving on to item 10, committee members request for future agenda items. Um, this is your opportunity to ask Mark or Mark to suggest um, what you would like to see on the next agenda. Well, for sure, what our, uh, an agenda item for the next one is the um, roles and responsibilities after um, Elisa, myself, uh, Director Finn and Director Hilliard get together and work on that. And then um, another agenda item would be financial, uh, just the first view of draft financial policies, uh, not looking for a board action at that time, but a review of those. Okay, great. All right. And, and so we'll probably have a lot more suggestions after seeing those for future finan financial, future items for the committee. Okay. So are there any other public, any other comments before we ask for public comments? No. Okay. Um, are there any public comments on, do we take uh, public comments when we're asking members? I guess we, um, I don't believe we need, we do public comment for future agenda items. Okay. Thank you. Are there any, um, public comments for future agenda items? There is no public comment. Hearing none, we move to item 11, one of the best items. Okay, so item 11 is adjournment. So do we need a motion to adjourn or can we just say, leave the meeting? We can say, leave the meeting. Okay, thank you everyone so much. Thanks everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for the valuable input. Well done. well done, Catherine, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, great, all right.